Hi, I'm Gorgo the Gargoyle, and we're on the set of the MonsterTVNetwork.com. Igor, pull the lever. Igor, pull the lever. Get <laughs> to it, will you? <laughs> and now, for tonight's weather, we take you to Junior on the West Parapet. What's it like out there, Junior? Raining. And... Still raining. Thank you, Junior. Hey, do you mind? You're fogging up the lens. Yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Huh? <laughs> Many of you might have seen the majestic ruins of Bannerman Castle for the first time from a train traveling alongside the Hudson River and wondered, what is that place? You don't find many Scottish castles in the middle of rivers in, the, in this country. And I think that it should be preserved as a, as a sample of the period of people's imaginations and ideas. The most important thing people should know about the island, I think, is the truth of how it, how it came about and what it was used for. And it wasn't used just for war purposes, that it was used for storage of um, things that became antiques. So I think we all need to be very careful about history and very accurate and very uh, sincere about preserving it because so much of it has disappeared already in our area. And the castle is so unique and so unusual. And to me, it's very precious, and I certainly hope we can preserve it. Hi, and welcome to Mike Bennett on the Road. Tonight, a truly amazing episode. We'll celebrate the wearing of the green with Danny Quinn. We'll introduce you to one of the top chef favorites. We'll also have Buddy Holly come to life on the stage of the Westchester Broadway Theater. Introduce you to very interesting participants in the amazing race, Kent and Vixen. But first, let's go to the Hard Rock Cafe in Manhattan. As Musicians on Call, an organization that sends musicians into hospital wards, celebrates with Seal and a local guy, Gavin DeGraw. Mike Bennett on the road, and tonight we're in Manhattan with Gavin DeGraw. Now, you're a How's Hudson Valley guy, aren't you? I'm uh, yeah. sort of, yeah. I'm from, I'm from Fallsburg, New York, which is uh, Sullivan County. Now, musicians on call, this is something near and dear to your heart? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, yesterday we were playing at a hospital in the Bronx, and patients who don't feel well enough um, will go room to room and play uh, bedside for the patients, and sometimes their parents are there or their sisters or their, you know, their husband or whatever. You know. That's got to be just as rewarding, if not more so, than playing out to a big concert hall. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's incredibly rewarding. And I, and I think that musicians out there who haven't done this before or gone and played at a high school and done something like it, I really recommend doing it. It's, it's so healthy. We've got lots to do, so let's start off in the spotlight. We went down to the Today Show with our buddy Al Roker and Matt Lauer and the gang. We brought some of our listeners, Jean Otis of Cortland Manor and her daughter. They got to meet KT Tunstall after she performed on the Today Show. Mm -hmm. KT, the singer-songwriter from Scotland. So let's look at this Edinburgh native as she performs on the Today Show. KT Tunstall in the spotlight with Mike and Casey in the evening. I remember the first time that I went to the Wish House, I just thought, oh gosh, this building is structured in such a nice way with the large room, and then there's a nice living room area, the bathroom is accessible, 
And this year, every time I come, there's something new and different. It's a wonderful environment for, for these kids to get together and for them to, uh, you know, see a bit of the inner workings of, of the organization. This is After Hours. Good. <laughs> they'll hit you, they'll wrap around you, and then they get you on the way back to you. Oh! And this thing just... So you just... You just, cut, you just basically cut it, just eviscerate a guy. And if that's not good enough, you can come around with a spike and his eye in the face. And so, you should, see these, cool. you should see these cats fight. Huh? The first thing I heard out of my mother's mouth every morning is a little kid. He's like, oh! Oh, my, my back, I, uh, my, my, my back is killing me. Oh, my feet, I got dead feet. And I, as a little kid said, <laughs> you know, that's great stuff. <laughs> Welcome, poor mortal, to this witch's dungeon of nightmares. <laughs> The creature almost came out of the screen. And this was black and white, and it worked perfectly in black and white. It stands up in 2D, just regular, like on, on video and stuff like that, it's wonderful. And people lucky enough to see it in 3D were just fascinated by it. I mean, to me, it left a lasting impression and, and made this old boy look more real. Well, in the golden age of the studio system, each company, uh, MGM, Paramount, 20th Century Fox, Universal, was uh, either like a city or a factory, depending on which analogy you want to use. But each one was self-contained. 